Two dudes with attitudes, let's go. It's the two dudes and the attitudes ruthless, aggressively speaking, so let's do this. We're riding, didn't they hit it? Get your attention to five star broadcast it. Start to the ending, whether it's the E or it's all E. The two dudes with the attitudes to bring the heat. Get the point, yeah, it's on, time to lock in. Listen to the podcast, where they get it popping. It's two dudes with attitudes, a wrestling podcast with Ryan enjoys wrestling and the heartbreak dude Denton. And this is our WWE edition where we're going to talk all things Monday Night Raw, NXT, and we'll have a fun little segment. We skipped out on Backlash. If you already don't know, we did a whole episode for that. So we covered basically SmackDown and Backlash. So go back and watch that on YouTube or listen to it wherever you're listening to our podcast if you want to get our opinions. As always, what's going on, Ryan? How's your week going? Are you like uh, excited for anything coming up? Or well, it's almost Friday, man. Wrestling? Almost the it weekend. Um, but it's been a, a good week in wrestling. I mean, I'm still <laughs> living off of that. Amazing! It, it, it's crazy. Like, we'll, and we'll talk about it. But how high and hot hyped that crowd was in Paris and France for Backlash and SmackDown, almost to a point where they were trying to take over the show. And then we get trying. to Raw and. The crowd was just it was crickets. It's just amazing. Like two two completely different countries, and mm -hmm. WWE is in one of these countries more than the other. And they just had a huge show in front of you know thousands of people. Broke the record for the largest gate in a in an indoor event in history and mm -hmm. something like that. And that crowd was amped from start to finish to Monday night where you couldn't hear any. You could barely hear. It was crickets. It was just it was awful, awful. Oh, you can it, hear a pin yeah, drop well, in the arena. It was definitely embarrassing. It was an AEW crowd for sure with nobody there. Oh, it felt like, yeah. I don't know what the point of the fans were. We'll get into it because I feel like their quietness ruined matches and segments throughout Monday Night Raw. So we'll get into that. But before we start, let's get into some news. Did it, did it, did it, did it, did it. Did it. We need, what do we you need got, sound Ryan? effect. We need something like the bump. Yeah, sound effect for the news or a yeah, video we do. or something. We do. Bum, 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 or something. <laughs> um, we do. I agree. I so agree. there's there's two bits of news heading into this week. Um, number one is over the weekend, um, the, the same night as Backlash, immediately after Backlash aired during the Kentucky Derby, the WWE released that they are putting WrestleMania 41. It is going, mm -hmm. they announced the location, and it's going to be in Las Vegas, Nevada, uh in april 2025 but they're moving it from april the, usually it's the first week of april the first mm -hmm. weekend this one is going to be easter weekend april's 19th and 20th of 2025 at allegiant stadium in las vegas viva las vegas which means that if me and ryan go we'll be spending easter together and not with our family Imagine that we can have an Easter brunch and then fade into WrestleMania night too. It should be good. <laughs> One of those Vegas all you can my, eat yeah. open all night brunches. If you know, if you know what I'm heck saying, yeah, the, heck the, yeah. Shoe, the shoe bar where every all they wear is shoes. Um, oh but, yeah, oh yeah. Vegas, Vegas is my second home. I have a Vegas tattoo. That's how much I love Las Vegas. So I'm excited. Hopefully we can go unless they price us out. We were just talking about that because I heard some of SummerSlam prices were released and they're like, I told you, man, I knew TK would ruin it because I remember when they took over UFC and I stopped going to those events because they out they just they they think everyone's a freaking millionaire. I'm like I have three hundred dollars yeah. to sit in nosebleed sections, and if and I go with someone that I'm paying or whatever, that's double. The crazy thing, ridiculous. yeah, it's it's like they don't pay attention to the world right now too. Like it's one mm -hmm. thing if the economy was doing great mm -hmm. and people the the job market was stable and stuff but yep. i mean it's it's tough times out there for a lot of people so it is um yeah so yeah i mean the, the prices are astronomical but we'll see what happens yep. with mania um we'll but it, it's curious i am interested in this because they're moving the dates of wrestlemania to april 19th and 20 and i i am curious if they're going to if this is going to cause like a domino effect or a ripple effect of the other ple's uh, you know, like the, the time between Elimination Chamber and WrestleMania is already long enough. Now you're adding two or three more weeks to the build. So are you going to move Elimination Chamber a little bit later? Maybe do put it in March or later in February? 
do you move obviously you're going to have to move backlash because this week this year backlash was on saturday may the 4th 2024 that's two weeks after this if, if wrestlemania this year was on april 19th and 20th that would have been exactly two weeks from the day mm -hmm of wrestlemania and that's too soon to have a ple immediately mm -hmm. after your biggest show so i feel like it's going to cause a, a domino effect of moving dates around and shuffling things around so i'm curious to see not just what they do with Mania. i mean we already know what they're doing with mania but what what do they mm -hmm. do before mania does the rumble start later does the rumble is is it because that's also a long stretch from november to the end of january without a ple so they got to i feel like they're going to have to do a, a a lot of shuffling around with dates and everything and i'm curious to see what they do or maybe just build more story. I mean, we don't need all these pay-per-views and our PLEs in between because you know yeah, the I, champion set. We know this is set. There's but like, it is like that's a like from February till April with Elimination mm -hmm. Chamber. That's like eight weeks. That's a long time. And now you're adding two more, three more weeks to that. That's like yeah, that's unless Rumbles like mid late January and then yeah. mid late February or early March is the next one. And then they can go into yeah, and then Mania in April. Way. So yeah, we'll but, see. I'm sure they have something planned. So yeah, they they're smart. They've got it all figured out, but I am curious mm -hmm. to see what happens. Um, and then in the other bit of news, um, Kevin Owens was on a, he did something. What did he say? He spoke with, uh, he, he was on a podcast of some sort. I don't have the, not the, ours. <laughs> yeah, I wish. Kevin Owens. I know, <laughs> but um, apparently he doesn't. He he admitted on this show, whatever it was, that he has nine months left on his WWE contract. Uh, cool. He, the former Universal's champion, signed a three-year contract with WWE back in 2021, and this was amid interest from AEW and came during a number of, a time where a number of wrestlers, Adam Cole, Brian Danielson, just to name a few, CM Punk had jumped ship to Tony Khan's promotion. Um, so they rewarded Kevin Owens' loyalty with two straight WrestleMania main events with Stone Cold Steve Austin, and then the main event of Ooh, WrestleMania so 39 against the Usos with Sami Zayn, and one of the coolest stories and best stories ever told. Um, and in this quote, he, said, he, he gave a quote right before Backlash in France um, where he took on – the bloodline he said that i really don't take anything for granted i've got nine months left on my contract and i don't know what can happen from here on out that's just life if i've learned anything over the last few years is that nothing is guaranteed i've learned that through some very unfortunate events we've lost so many good people that was never expected that's just one example of how i don't take anything do not take anything for granted how i look at things now he's talking about losing bray wyatt jay briscoe mm -hmm. and Brody lee all people he was close to um, he also said that WWE is his home, um, saying that this has been my home for 10 years and it's beyond, it, it's beyond the locker room. It's good to have somebody to bounce around, somebody you trust, talking about Sami Zayn. When I got here, I got really close with Finn Balor right away. I could tell this was going to be a guy I could trust. And now he's like a brother to me. We might not be together all the time. Me and Sami are on different brands, so we don't see each other as much. We're always in contact. And when it comes along, we always have a sounding board. Um, so essentially, he's... Basically saying, you know, I'm probably not going anywhere anytime soon, but I don't know. I've always been in the camp that of all the people, Seth Rollins, Finn Balor, Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens, of all the people that could jump ship to AEW, I always felt the most mm. realistic of them was Kevin Owens. But I still don't think he's going to go anywhere, mainly because of w maybe if this was 2021 and AEW was hot again, then mm -hmm. yeah, I can maybe see it. But AEW is kind of floundering, and WWE is on top of the world. So I don't see him leaving anytime soon. But I do think he would be the most realistic of that group of Becky Lynch, Seth Rollins, Finn Balor. You know, all well, Becky those already signed. Yeah, Becky's already signed. Uh, Drew McIntyre's already re-signed. Finn mm -hmm. Balor's back. So, mm -hmm. yeah, Kevin Owens isn't going anywhere. And Seth is going to sign. So, no, no. Here's the thing. I've said it once. I'll say it again. Nobody in WWE who is still in their career right now is leaving. Adam Copeland, the only reason why he left Edge was because he wanted something and the WWE wanted something else, so he left. That didn't happen with anybody else. None of these guys are leaving the end. Nobody in their right mind and a superstar no. level is going to leave for AEW. It makes zero sense. Zero. And Triple no. H now is running a whole different... No. They're going yeah. nowhere. No. Don't even, don't even try is, to talk about it for clicks. No point. Yeah. No, the only, <laughs> thing I, the only thing is, is what is left for Kevin Owens to accomplish? Like Finn Balor, I could see... Him having still wanting to do something, 
I, Seth Rollins probably wants to go down as one of the greatest of all time. Becky Lynch mm -hmm. wants to go down as one of, but you know, Kevin Owens has won the Universal Title. He has mm -hmm. main evented two straight WrestleManias. He's mm -hmm. he has still been, in the title hunt. Yeah. yeah, he's still in the title hunt. He's in. He he keeps getting thrown into the bloodline story. Mm -hmm. um, so I mean, what else is there really for him to accomplish in WWE? But with that being said, mm -hmm. I still don't think he's leaving. Mm -mm. No, sir, not happening. No chance. No. Let's just move on. Good, uh, good job on Kevin Owens. He brings that up because he wants more money. There's nothing else. Yeah, it's a, it's a negotiation about. tactic. Yeah, stay in the limelight and so on. Now people know. All yeah. right, you ready for the week? Let's get into it, man. Week All right, it's week. time for Monday Night Raw. <clears throat> the Judgment Day opened the show and Priest apologizes for being mean and they all hug it out. Drew is out of the King of the Ring due to injury, so Finn celebrates having a bye. Out comes Adam Pierce to announce he's now facing Jay Uso, who goes on to beat Finn to advance. Uh, Drew is mad at Pierce for not allowing him to wrestle, and then he drives off as soon as Punk drives in. Camera follows Punk to the ring in one shot once again. They do that once a week. And he cuts a promo about Drew McIntyre, mocks him. His return is getting closer, and he refuses to leave the ring until Drew McIntyre shows up. Punk leaves. Io, Io Sky See? beats Natalia to move on. <laughs> Dragunov beats Ricochet in his debut. Zoe Starks defeats Ivy Nile to advance. R-Truth wants to face off against UConn for the titles. Braun Breaker is upset he's not in the King of the Ring tournament. Judgment Day makes Finn feel better for losing. Aww. And Carlito wants to work with them. Chad Gable and Bronson Reed uh, end in a DQ because of Sami Zayn. After the match, Bronson Reed beats both of them up. Becky Lynch for a sit-down, and she's excited for all her challengers in the future. When Morgan interrupts, and she's sick of not being brought up, Damage Control comes out, jumps Lynch, and Liv runs away. Valkyria makes a save. Sami Zayn versus Gable versus Reed at King of the Ring. Valkyria defeats Dakota Kai to advance. And in the main event, Gunta defeats Sheamus to move on. And that's the Monday Night Raw recap. Where do you want to start? Lots of dissect oh. here in a way. Judgment Day's doing yeah. things. And... Yeah, I don't understand what they're doing there. But I want to I want to talk CM Punk because yeah, we have some you do. we have some differing views here, but Mm -hmm. um, I made a video on TikTok at Ryan Enjoys Wrestling. Everyone should go watch it and go follow me and all that jazz. I but agree. Do I, it. I wrote. I wrote on. Or I, I posted on there that CM Punk's just not. He's not landing with me right now, and uh, I'm still waiting for like that. Oh shit! Promo from CM Punk, and maybe those days are gone. I don't know, but he's just not. He's not. He's not doing it for me. And I just I feel like everything he's he's doing and saying is pretty repetitive, you know, threatening not to leave and then leaving just like all this it's weird stuff. And he's just not he's just not hitting for me. And for example, you know, I want the I want the old, uh, you know, people on the video were commenting. You want the heel CM Punk? No, I don't want the heel CM Punk. Heel CM Punk was great. Yes. But I want the anti-authority CM Punk, the one that doesn't give a shit what anybody says. For example, mm -hmm. Adam Pierce was there to meet CM Punk when he showed up late to Monday Night Raw this week. And CM Punk was like, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Pierce. I was stuck in traffic. <laughs> it won't happen again. Is Drew here? Oh, that was him right there who just left. Oh, shucks. Okay. Hey, I tell you what. Why don't you tell <laughs> why don't you tell Billy over in the truck to get my music ready? Because I have something I want to say. Okay, Punk, I can certainly do that. Boop, 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 boop. Chad Gable, hey, you're a heel. What's up, man? High five. Big gulps, huh? All right. Well, see you later. And then walks through the ring. Uh, great Play line. my music. You know, it's just like that's it. Like what I mm -hmm. want is, hey, you were late, Punk. Yeah, I was late. I'm, I don't care. Like what are you going to do? You're going to fire me? I'm like your biggest mm -hmm. ratings draw. You're really going to fire me? You know, it's crap like this that made me leave this company 10 years ago. Like, mm -hmm. are you gonna get? Are you gonna mm -hmm. get mad at Drew for leaving early? Are you gonna get mad at so and so for showing up late? Like, why are you mad? Mm -hmm. Why are you coming at me? That's what I want. Like, I want mm -hmm. his character to have a little bit of an edge. And right now, mm -hmm. I just feel like we're getting the the punk, the CM Punk that MJF said we were gonna get. The PG Punk, the insert hockey reference here. The man, it feels good to be in insert city here. This the same CM Punk mm -hmm. that MJF said we were gonna that we were getting in AEW. PG Punk is exactly what we're getting right now. 
And I want to <clears> see the more, I want to just see him more with an edge. <clears throat> and I almost wish that the WWE would send out fake stories to the dirt sheets because you know they would run with it and uh -huh. say that CM Punk is having problems with people backstage. Say that CM Punk and Drew McIntyre had a backstage kerfuffle over a line mm -hmm. that Drew McIntyre said or over some of the trolling that he's done. At least then it would give him a little bit of an edge and it would give him a little bit of a of a character. Because right now I just don't know who CM Punk's character is. You want Punk to have more drama spread about him. Here's the thing. <laughs> so let me just say this. One thing that I've always loved about all elite wrestling is that when you go to an event, the crowd is hyped as shit. Doesn't matter if there's 13 yeah. people there or 90,000 wink, wink in Wembley. No matter what's going on, the crowd is into it. Every event I've ever been to, which is every event they've ever had in California, I have roared, cheered, been into. It's insane, right? And that's the reason why I think a lot of people think certain matches are so much better than what they are because the crowd is so flip it when you're chanting this is awesome every 10 seconds you're ten it's like here's the thing right you ever gone to a movie theater and watched a comedy ryan and oh yeah yeah it's a it's a full crowd and you're laughing hysterically at the movie everybody's laughing right and you're mm -hmm. just enjoying it so then you tell your friend your wife whoever you're like hey i saw this movie in theaters it was hilarious let's rent it or buy it or download it whatever you're doing and let's watch it. And then you watch it with just that one person. And it's really not that funny. Does it hit as much? The this hangover? and that. Because yeah. I, you better watch your tone, <laughs> mister. But so everyone, right? Because the whole crowd was into yeah. it and laughing. This is how I felt about this Monday Night Raw. And maybe that's why you feel this way. Maybe you don't. But yeah. I just feel like these matches were good. But the crowd sat on their hands. This CM Punk promo, I thought was actually good. They just sat on their hands when the crowd is refusing to give you anything. There was parts of the match where you yeah. could like hear everything, like every bounce, every you're not supposed to hear that unless you're live. It was really awkward. Becky Lynch, even her sit down, got zero reaction. Yeah. Just people did not give a shit. I don't even know why you paid to go. Who why were you there if you don't even want to like cheer? So I get what you're saying about like the punk thing and you know, he needs to be more of a badass and so on, but him and drew right now are like top two, three, maybe one best thing going on in WWE right now. I am. So this is what is the difference between AEW and WWE is that they're injured. He's injured, whatever, but they're giving us the every week and hyping it and finding yeah. new ways. He shows up, he leaves, he goes to the skybox. He's in the ring. They're giving us ways to divert from, them having to touch each other by building a great like i want to see these guys freaking oh yeah i'm ready grow. for them to fight and, yeah, I, and I don't even know great. who's gonna win because who's gonna win because they both can't lose so yeah. i'm like super flipping pump for this now i'll give you that i don't know if cm punk just went off the cuff and made that stupid line but that was a bad line you don't say i'm not leaving unless and then have adam pierce come out they should have radioed adam pierce and something said, hey, look at you got to get him out of the ring because he said he ain't leaving until then, and then he just left. But, but then, like, yeah, you like, can't do how, that because it makes you look like a bitch. Like, why also, did you not? How are you gonna? How are you gonna? Like, at least then make the promo seem like it's off the cuff. You know, mm -hmm. like, like he's like, hey, tell Billy in the truck to get my music ready. I have something I gotta say. And Adam Pierce is like, you got it, punk. Like, no, be like, yeah, whoa, yeah. whoa, I didn't. That's not on the docket for tonight. What's going? Like, yeah. At least have Adam Pierce show a little bit of emotion. Then I would have yeah. been I would have been fine with it. Like, okay, there's the CM Punk that we all know, yeah. defying authority, yeah. not really caring, coming out and you know mm -hmm. holding the show hostage until like, like that. But but it was just all the the antics. And I think I think yeah. some of it too is we've talked about this before with like WWE Network stuff giving us too mm -hmm. much stuff behind the scenes. I think that's what we're getting too much behind the scenes with CM Punk. I agree. You know, we're getting him showing up at NXT and he's hugging on Cora Jade and he's he's over here helping this person and he's giving advice locked to this in a person. bathroom. <laughs> yeah, he's locked in the WWE headquarters. We're getting a lot of, you know, man, am I happy to be at WWE? Like, and that's mm -hmm. not who CM Punk is. And I think that's what's kind of making me sour on him a little bit. I want to just don't give us all this backstage stuff. And then, mm -hmm. um, you know, where he's like, oh, I'm, I'm, he's a delight backstage. He's fantastic to work with. Everybody's mm -hmm. loving CM Punk. I don't need to know that. Like, yes, I'm, I'm happy that it's working out. Don't get me wrong, but they don't need to tell us that every 15 seconds. Booker T made up a story just to get clicks. He was like, yeah, P Punk and I had a little backstage altercation. Yeah, it was not even true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he was just, he was just doing it to get clicks on his podcast. He even admitted it the next week. He was like, I was trolling all of you, but at least like it got, 
I was like, oh, okay, maybe maybe there's something to this. And now we're going to mm-hmm. have a little bit of Booker T and CM Punk going at it. I don't know. I just I, I just want to see less behind the scenes. You know, he's helping people in NXT. Like, he can do all yeah. that, but you don't have to put it on social media. We don't have to see it on the WWE <clears throat> Network. We don't have to see him doing all the wearing suits at pre-shows and wearing, you know, in it, doing all the mm-hmm. pre-show television stuff and being in the ring with Cody Rhodes to celebrate when he won- finished the story. You know, when he's only been there for 10 minutes and only had one match. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just not feeling CM Punk right now. Well, that well, that's what I think is wrong with wrestling in general. Like, why the hell am I seeing the gorilla position every week on WWE? Yeah, AEW? exactly. Now we have freaking AEW recording from the gorilla position. We have Tony CM Khan Punk waving there. at Triple H when they go by the gorilla position. I'm just over all of, like, the insider stuff. Sorry, I'm about to sneeze. Yeah. No, I'm um, I'm just yeah. I'm I'm thank you. I'm I'm just so sick. I just it takes me too out of it. Like I like these little like long view shots and everything, but I'm just so tired of like I used to oh, like I think we talked about this before. I've always wanted to see like what goes on behind the scenes and now I'm over it because I I, I don't want to see it. It's too you're you're making it too fake. Don't take me out of exactly. it. Exactly. I don't want to watch Game issue. of Thrones. Yeah. I don't want to watch them go on a piss break and a smoke break behind the scenes after they shoot a scene. I want to be in the show. I want to be in the movie. I want to be in wrestling. The reason why I love wrestling, I did a top five ones about this. Number one is the stories. I love the stories and the characters. I love it. Nothing is better than wrestling. I don't care if you your favorite movie of all time, favorite show of all time, nothing beats the story and the characters in professional wrestling. And that's why I love it. Stop showing me all the shit behind the scenes please i'm freaking over it that's why i hated the behind scenes footage of punk and jack perry like i'm just so over yeah. it. just give me freaking story and wrestling please that's all i want i don't need what yeah. happens but i don't care about becky lynch driving a trailer all around town with seth rollins because they're raising a baby together leave that shit out of there i want to see wrestling that's what exactly. i exactly yeah, and I that's think that's what what's <clears throat> that's what's hurting me with Punk because that's not his character, and his character mm-hmm. on TV is supposed to be anti-authority. I, you're lucky I'm here type thing. Like I'm not wrestling you; you're wrestling me type attitude. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I feel like we're we're getting too much behind the scenes, and we're getting too mm-hmm. much. You know, oh, I'm just so happy to be here. Shucks, folks. I'm I. Yeah. Hey, Chad, and like also like Chad Gable, <laughs> like high five and Chad Gable before he goes to the ring. It's like, but isn't he a heel? Like that, that kind of stuff. Let's, yeah, I don't. Yeah, that. is he? Who yeah, knows? Who knows if he is? I have, that. I have no idea. But w- one thing I want to bring up, I don't know. I want to talk about Becky Lynch. Okay. I had a problem. I wanted Liv Morgan to win that battle royal. She didn't win, and all the experts and podcasters and people on TikTok. I did experts in quotes in case you're just listening and not watching on video because none of these fools are experts. They and neither are we. They um praise the fact that no it's going to give Liv morgan the chance to build up and this and that and i was still anti it because i i just felt like becky lynch is kind of people said she was stale with her heel persona so she went back to like the man and people were like oh finally but i think she's stale as the man and this promo was really proving of that that she came out and said the she's like it's like when you're a champion in wwe you have to cut the same promos every week, a la Cody Rhodes, mm-hmm. a la Becky Lynch. What was her promo again? Oh, that's right. I'm so excited to be champion and all the challengers that we're going to face. I'm going to name my five best friends. And then after that, I'll name other people because I think everyone's going to be a challenger. And I'm going to face them all and be the best. Shut the f- up. I don't want that. I want feuds. I want rivalries. I don't want to know that you're going to face your best friend Valkyria again for no reason. No, I want Rock. So then Liv Morgan came out, cut a pretty damn good promo, rocking Dirty Dom scarf if no or bandana if nobody noticed that. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so great, great shit. But here's the thing. All right. So you gave Becky Lynch a title and not had Liv Morgan. You're having Liv Morgan basically. Are they fighting at King of the Ring already? Like she basically came out and said, I want the damn title. Is it me? Can they? Liv Morgan cannot lose, correct? I don't care what anybody says about like, oh, the future and oh, you can keep. No, she has lost weight. She cannot lose because your excuse was the battle royal, right? That was everyone's excuse. Well, winning the battle royal wasn't her winning the belt. No, no. She has to win if they're going to face each other. 
She has to. I don't care if it's at yeah. the ring or if it's later on. She has to win. Next time she faces the tight champion, she has to win. And I think she needs to face Becky Lynch win with the help of Dirty Dom, which then reveals. I think it needs to be Mommy and Dirty Dom, through all their years of being together, never kissed on TV. Never. And yes, I know Liv Morgan is railing Bo Dallas right now, but we know that ain't going to last. But here's the <laughs> thing, right? We need, not until I get on the scene, uh, not until Vegas when I see her, baby. Right. Um, yeah. But here's here's the thing, right? You can't, You can, so I want Dirty Dom to help have Liv Morgan pin Becky Lynch in the corner like, what? And then Dom come in and they make out in the middle of the ring while she has that belt. I'm talking making out like Edge and Lee. I'm talking tongue slapping everywhere. I want gross Sammy Guevara and his wife kissing on AEW. I want Vic, nasty. Vicky Guerrero, Edge. Hell yeah. yeah. I want like, uh, yeah. I want it all over the damn play. I want it bad just so that way. It just shows that like they are way more not only is she mommy but she's like mommy like dom is not and i know dom just got married and stuff this is acting people i just want it like that to show that it's more than so then when rhea ripley does come back she's like oh. not only did i take him i took him i took your belt and then she gets into judgment day this is where i wanted to go it needs to go there am i wrong like no, I, you're I just yeah we cannot have Liv Morgan lose to Becky Lynch or it's no. like, you might as well yeah. just get rid of her. Let yeah. her go to it's, AEW. What's the point? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, That's kind of how I feel. It's, it's almost now or never with mm -hmm. Liv Morgan. I feel like it was now three weeks ago when they did that battle Royal with, with Becky, with Liv Morgan and they chose to have Becky Lynch win instead. But now mm -hmm. I really feel like if she doesn't mm -hmm. win now, she, they're just, they're not going to put it. They're not going to put the belt on her. Um, no. So, yeah. So, I think you're 100% right. And I love the idea of Dominic Mysterio caught being the reason that Becky Lynch loses. She looks confused as to mm -hmm. like, why, what are you doing out here? And then them making out and mm -hmm. adding some confusion to the judgment day because Dom's been kind of doing his mm -hmm. own thing, bringing Carlito over, talking to Santos Escobar and bringing mm -hmm. and like adding mm -hmm. some friction in the judgment day a little bit. So yeah, I love that idea. I think that's, that's the right way to go and give Liv, her first championship reign was a dud, but it was also mm -hmm. because of the way it was booked. I think if they agree. if they can give her a good story, you know, tell give build to the return of freaking Rhea Ripley, that that pop that <clears throat> Rhea will get will be fantastic because of the work yep. that Liv Morgan and Dirty Dom will do. So yeah. make it happen, man. This is this is good stuff. And Liv needs a few title defenses before Rhea comes back, not just Rhea instantly or have her win yeah. it a week before Rhea. So then she just loses it. And Rhea yeah. needs to come back like, as a baby face and no longer be in Judgment Day. So that's yeah. Good. Don't do yeah. don't have her win it at King of the Ring and then at SummerSlam she loses it. Like, mm -hmm. that's dumb. like have her build, have it at least have it until mm -hmm. WrestleMania or something, and then have Liv Morgan versus. I'll Rhea take Ripley. Survivor Series. Just anything. Yeah. yeah. Which it should yeah. it should have been Liv versus Rhea at this year's WrestleMania instead of Rhea versus yep. Becky, but. But I digress. Yeah. No, Becky still um, is uh, as ever. All right. Yeah. Anything else? The King of the Ring, man. Like it's it was a good night of wrestling for WWE. I, I uh, you wouldn't know it. Yeah. Yeah. But the matches were like the Gunther Sheamus match was a banger. Um, mm -hmm. you know, the Ricochet match in Ricochet's teasing a character change now, apparently, after he lost. Um, he he wrote on X like who the F cares anymore. And he basically said uh, there's rumors that he's bringing the Prince Puma gimmick back or whatever it was that he had mm. before. But, but he, but also tell me your little experiment is completely irrelevant without telling me your little experiment is completely irrelevant because Ricochet did not come out with the speed title. You know, he just won the WWE speed championship and he came out. I thought the same thing. <laughs> he didn't come out rocking the, they were talking about it. They were talking yes. about how, He's the first ever speed, like the new season of WWE Speed picks up on Wednesday, live on X. Come check it out. What's going to happen? And here comes Ricochet with no title, none mm -hmm. whatsoever. And it's just mm -hmm. like, okay, why? What are we doing here? Why? Why'd you do this? Um, but <laughs> tell so me, a title isn't important without telling <laughs> yeah. me the title isn't important. Yeah. yeah, that's some AEW stuff right there. It's like it oh, is for sure. Oh yeah, we forgot the belt. You know, the, that's like the FTW Championship, which is apparently more relevant <laughs> now than ever. But um, we'll get into that tomorrow, but yeah, the, the, the matches, man, like the, the King of the ring, 
I mean, this is how you do a tournament. And now SmackDown is going to have its own set of tournament and tournament brackets. And I mean, I'm I'm excited. Like I, Dragonoff looked like a stud in that match against uh, Ricochet. Mm-hmm. Gunther mm-hmm. brought it as he usually does. Um, Jay Uso, I wasn't really a big fan of him getting a win early on, but I know he's super over and the crowd likes him. But at the expense of Finn Balor and Judgment Day, again, like what are we doing with Judgment Day? Why are they losing all the time? Um, Dude, but damage control taking another loss, but uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, judgment day and damage control, all they do is lose, but but they yeah. run Monday Night Raw, both of them, they both run, yeah, it. They run it. <laughs> I know, I know, mm-hmm. that's like that's like saying you run the NBA and then you get you don't even make the play, like the Golden State Warriors, we yeah. run this stuff and then you don't even make the playoffs, <laughs> um, makes no sense, uh, no, not but, at all, but They're no, it was playing. a good. A good week of good week of King of the Ring stuff. I'm excited to see what SmackDown has to do. And right now, this tournament, I mean, this looks like Gunther's tournament to win. But at the same time, there's going to be some bangers along the way. Like it's Gunther's going to have to have a match against Dragonoff at some point in the future, um, which mm-hmm. I've been we're we're all dying to see. You know, Jay Uso is going to be doing some cool things in this tournament. Uh, you know, so should be a, should be a fun time. I'm mm-hmm. I'm excited to see where they go. You know, the thing that I love about this is that they're making it feel important again. And it, it it just, it feels good. I also like that they did the split brand. We're not mixing. So yeah. Raw's Raw, and they haven't told us who's on SmackDown yet. So thinking Guthrie's going to win, who knows? What if Randy Orton's on the SmackDown side? What if, like, Logan Paul? I don't know. We, we have so many possible. Well, they, they've announced the SmackDown. Oh, they did? They didn't on Raw. It was just a blank. Yeah, it's uh, it's AJ Styles versus Randy Orton. In the in the first round, that's Baron, a first round matchup. Yeah, Baron Corbin versus Carmelo Hayes in the first round. Uh, L.A. Knight versus Santos Escobar. I think we all know who's oh, winning that one. Oh, oh, oh. And, and then Bobby Lashley versus Tama Tonga. So you got so, Rick. Yeah. Wait, what? Yeah. Why Tama did they Tonga. put Tommy Tonga? He's not going to win. Why put him in that? So stupid. Roman, Why maybe we... maybe Roman Reigns comes out and that's how he that's how he returns. I don't know. He's good. He'll be Bobby. Have, uh... He'll be Bobby Lashley. He'll Will Bobby Lashley. He? I, yeah, but I don't know. I right now the bloodline solo and all of them need to do nothing but win. They cannot be losing yeah. any. I don't care if he loses in the finals to Gunther. You cannot. You got to uh, anyway. All right. So that, that's what I mean. Yeah. So I'm assuming we're going to get Orton versus Gunther, which will be a freaking banger. Yeah. Yeah, and then I would love to see Gunther be King Gunther. Yeah, yeah, it'd be awesome. So, yeah, I mean, this King of the Ring tournament is stacked. Um, Who's on the women's side? That they the say women's. Let's see. Let me get the Queen of the Ring. The women is. Um, hang on. The Queen of the Ring bracket. So on Raw, Io Sky beat Natalia. Mm-hmm. Lyra, Lyra Valkyria beat Dakota Kai. Which okay. Mm-hmm. Zoe Stark beat Ivy Nile, and mm-hmm. um, Shayna Baszler will wrestle Zelina Vega at a later date. Um, that is the thing I didn't like, that they yeah. said two of the people, like the girl and the boys, were wrestling at a live event. Kofi what and Rey Mysterio. Fudge. Yeah, Talk about the... disrespect. You couldn't even, like, a live event? Cool. Yeah. Cool I, know. Means. I know who's not winning, the Queen of the Ring. Um, <laughs> Let me see if I can find the the brackets for SmackDown if they've announced it yet. Um, King and Queen card dates. Let's see. Come on. Okay, so oh, that's the PLE. Um, yeah, I don't know if they've announced the women's bracket Nothing yet. Yet. All right, all right. Well, yeah. either way, it's been good. I'm excited. The best the the. The way we're going to tell, though, right, is what happens after. You can build up and lead it all the way you want, but if once somebody wins and it's pointless, that's what I'm afraid of. I don't want them to, like, all of a sudden be, like, King Tomatonga. Like, I don't want – I want – it needs to be Gunther. It needs to be a big female. It needs to be somebody who can carry it and be that person. We can't give it to Xavier Woods and Selena Vega when they're not ready. You know what I mean? Yeah. You need to give it people who are ready to carry this because the king and queen need to be – prominent again king of the ring used to be my favorite thing so oh let's i love bring that dish back yeah let's and bring I, it back and whatever they do like i i say this all the time i feel like but mm-hmm. please don't give them unless it's somebody like gunther where he could really make it work 
don't <clears throat> give them a stupid king and queen gimmick. You know, we already have Charlotte Flair, who is the queen. Of, so we're now we're going to have, mm -hmm. you know, queen. Like we had Queen Zelina Vega and King Co uh, Xavier Woods and King Sheamus and King Barrett. Like, I don't know, the, King Corbin. Those gimmicks, they're just a little cheesy to me. Like King Booker was mm -hmm. fun, but... <laughs> Again, I don't know. All my favorite kings are always the ones who were the kings. I love it. I love it. Even Owen Hart yeah. when he did, I love. I love it. it I'm but just it, saying. It, but it's. I, I I love it if it feels important. But like King mm -hmm. Xavier Woods getting his crown destroyed by Roman Reigns, and then we never. Yeah. They, they never revisited that, and then Queen mm -hmm. Zelina Vega, and they never. She never won the women's championship mm -hmm. or did anything really from there, and then King Corbin, he was jobbing left and right to everybody, and. King Wade Barrett was, you know, he was losing all the time. So I'm okay if they do it, but like if you're gonna do it, go all in and make them unstoppable. Yeah. Like King Gunther. King Gunther, the ring king general. Yeah. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited. All right. You ready for NXT action? Yeah. Let's get it. We finally it. got a normal episode, non-spring break in after two weeks. So the show opens with Wes Lee defeating Josh Briggs after Ivar and Briggs fight. Tyreek and Tyson want a title shot, but no quarter catch crew tell them to get in line. Shayna Baszler defeats Carmen Petrovic. Fallon tells Kalani George it's all about her. Tyreek and Tyson defeat the no quarter catch crew. Roxanne Perez isn't afraid of Chelsea Green. Mitchin defeats Ariana Grace. Thea Hale and Ridge Holland are talking, and Chase U shows up. What happened to the other boyfriend? I guess Thea Hale now is just moving on. Duke Hudson and Lexus Clean King later tonight. Supernova sessions with Trick Williams. The envelope bum 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 had a pick in it of Trick pinning Noam Dar while his foot was under the rope. Cool, I guess. All right. Then Trick and Legend flirt more, and she calls him babe by accident. And then Noam Dar elbows Trick in the face while they're flirting and knocks him out. Dar holds up the belt. The combine is going on to decide the 12 girls a face off for the North American Women's Championship. Carmen feels bad for letting Natalia down and a creepy dude walks in and calls her a smoke show. So she kicks him in the face. Henley defeats Jordan. The no quarter catch crew are ready for the Tony D next week. Ava announces the 12 girls who will compete for the North American women's title. Lexus King defeats Duke Hudson. Jasmine Nix is mad at Thea Hell for hurting JC Jane and she wants revenge. Ridge Holland wants to earn Chase U's respect. And in the main event, Roxanne Perez defeats Chelsea Green in about seven minutes to defend her title. The D'Angelo family beats up Damon Kemp and kidnaps him to close the show. And that's the NXT recap. Really quick, before we get on, I just wanted to state because I didn't want to add it into my recap. But the 12 women are in this order because they were ranked. Sol Ruka, Thea Hell, Jada Parker, Brindley Reese, Mitchin, Fallon Henley, Lash Legend, Ivy Nile, Izzy Dame, Kalani George, Tatum Paxley, and Ren Sinclair are the 12 out of 20. So they had to make that damn cut. Those four eight girls were like, <laughs> wah, wah. but yeah, so that is the 12 facing off for the North American Women's Championship. Where do you want to start, bro? I feel like this is wash, rinse, repeat with WWE, but they just locked in the rosters from the draft last mm -hmm. week, if you will. Mm -hmm. And this week you have Chelsea Green on NXT when she's supposed to be on SmackDown mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. And you had Shayna Baszler, who was supposed to have a match on Monday Night Raw, showing mm -hmm. up on NXT when the rosters are technically locked. And now you have Ivy Nile going after the Women's North American Championship when she just lost Queen of the Ring opening match on Raw, where she is, con you know, contractually obligated to be. Yep. Uh -huh. uh, she was on NXT. <clears throat> She's going to be on NXT. Just like again, the draft is completely stupid and uh -huh. irrelevant and a waste yep, of time. Already. Already. I mean, not this even is not the end. perfect. Was this for one? This NXT episode was a miss to me. It just did not oh, yeah. click really at all. And the thing is, is that this was the perfect time to bring in actual superstars who like didn't get drafted, who are coming over to NXT. This is like your time to bring in the Baron Corbins and so on, the Mandy Roses. But instead, we got people like, why bring Chelsea Green in? Just a job to Roxanne Perez. That match was eight minutes max. Why did you bring Chelsea Green in? What was the point of that? What did have, what did that do for any of them? 
for Roxanne, for her. Why is the D'Angelo family kidnapping people still? Are we like there was and a then, point yeah. in the show the where power? people were getting who has the yeah. power? Like Oh, not you. God. Trick Williams has the power. Like, yeah, Ava right? Rain like, has the power. You know, like. Oh my gosh! Oh. I'm like, and I don't. I didn't mind the Trick Williams stuff. I mean, him and Lash Legend, they're dating in real life, right? We're like, Apparently, yeah. bringing on with this. Obviously, they're secretly dating, and they call each other daddy, so they're into that shit. But I don't understand, like, other than that, like, it's just only building to Noem Dar. Is this going to be a swerve? Wink, wink. Is like she gonna turn on him at the last second she's pretending to be or is this like really them leading it i don't know where this is going but i am intrigued at least really that was the only good stuff i i like the nxc women's championship but the combine what the fudge what was the yeah. point of that what, what was the point of that tell me please i can't and tell I me how through I all that soul ruka was the number one in that category there's no way soul ruka would have beat someone like lash legend a girl's a no. beast and a combine ivy nile that girl looks like all she does is combines she like soul ruka yeah. like and if you're doing pure combine your stats you're gonna tell me ivy nile who's built like a brick house got like 10th ranked out of everybody thea hell thea and hell again, i love her i think again her. But she's this, number three or something. Get out of my face with that. Get and up, this is up. it's another. We talked about. We just talked about this. It's another thing where they're giving us too much stuff behind mm -hmm. the scenes. I don't need to know mm -hmm. how good they are throwing a medicine ball. I don't need to know how good <laughs> they are. You know, with the uh, you know bench pressing. I know these women yeah. are jacked. I know these women uh -huh. are strong. Like just mm -hmm. you. Know, there's so many different ways you can do it. Do it based on I don't know win loss record. Do it based yeah. on uh you know hey we're gonna just do a tournament you know you love your tournament yeah you don't have to get i don't know you're just going a little too overboard i, I appreciate the creativity don't get me wrong it's a different way yeah, of looking at it but yeah. yeah like you said like soul ruka being the number one when lash legend dominated that medicine ball throw ren sinclair looked really yeah. freaking strong in this <clears throat> and you know mitchin looked great uh izzy dane looked great ivy nile was like probably the best conditioned of all of them mm -hmm. but then but but no sol rook is the number one overall like they didn't bring her up once but she yeah, no. was number one and yeah don't get me wrong she serves she's hot as hell i'd marry her too but she ain't <laughs> winning no combine out of those girls and i, I think the only reason why they did the combine because they did it in the UFC Apex, where and that's what they're trying to like do, right? Is it the whole because it's UFC is where that it's going to be crowned in their mm -hmm. arena that they do their performance center? So I think it was like you know let's let's make it real, blah blah blah. I don't know. It was a huge miss for me. Uh, but the whole thing was: is there really anything else you really want to? I mean, why are we still kidnapping people? These guys get like lawyered on this show so they take it seriously but then d'angelo can just kill pretty deadly and constantly kidnap people and we're all just like good with it we're, we're, we're gonna pretend <laughs> yeah. like it didn't happen like Shawn michaels like well whatever yeah i mean it's you so know they're doing it too they're on camera and it's that's what i'm saying yeah <laughs> it's so dumb committing so a dumb. felony on screen but yeah and yeah and like the the 50 50 booking with lexus king i don't understand what oh, they're doing like he's beating chase you this week of you know andre who who, who yeah or duke hudson rather duke not hudson, yeah yeah not not andre chase but duke hudson you know like fine cool but then like next week i have a feeling he's probably gonna lose and it's just yeah like what are we doing with lexus king I, i'm still just not feeling him i'm not feeling him at all no he's been a dud like sean spears like what the hell why even bring them over if you're not I know. gonna elevate them uh, and what's going on with the hell? Was she not just getting with that guy? Did I miss something when she stopped dating the Chase U other guy? Or was she was all into him? And I know JC Jane like ruined it. But then I thought they found out that it wasn't her fault. But now she's just dating Rich Holland. I, I don't what's like we just we were done with that guy. He's still yeah. there. It isn't beats, he? I yeah. thought he was. Yeah, I think, I don't. yeah uh, it beats me. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with all that. I and feel like Rich Holland's married. Why is he like? And they show that he's married. Not like he's married in real life, but in character, he's not. Like they yeah. showed him talking to his wife and kid. And now, are, are they not flirting? Or is that, am I missing something? Are they just being. Yeah. He, and he even said, it, it, it's weird because he said, like, every time I see Thea Hale, it reminds me of my daughter, which is like, that's even, I don't know. That's really weird to me, in my opinion. But I don't know. It's just. I don't know what they're doing. I really don't with, with some of this stuff. And mm -hmm. then the, the Tony D'Angelo, this man just competed for the NXT championship at mm -hmm. their WrestleMania, their biggest show, Stand mm -hmm. and Deliver. 
And instead of getting a shot against Trick Williams, instead of getting a shot, you know, kind of elevate climbing up the ranks, he's back mm-hmm. to kidnapping uh, Charlie Dempsey and his in his cronies. Like I, I don't understand yeah. what's going on there. Like I, I like the family. I think that they have great character. I, I like the story. Mm-hmm. But you, I mean, talk about you go. You were at the highest of highs at the biggest show of the year. Yeah. Now, now you're back down. Did that build you up at all? Did that make you what you're supposed to be? I, I yeah. don't know. I really thought after Stand and Deliver, with everybody being drafted, Carmelo Hayes gone, Braun Breaker gone, you know, Dragunov gone. I really thought like Tony D is going to be the guy in a in, in NXT. And I know you got to build them. I get it. Like it's going to take some time, but I don't know. It it just feels like he's back to doing what he was doing before Stand and Deliver, and he's just yeah. kind of stagnant. All right. Yeah. I mean, before we get to the segment, the thing is, too, is with them is that I was OK with like the restaurant stuff and like the gambling, because that's how you could be a mobster in a world where you're not allowed to be a mobster. But now he's kidnapping people again. Like now that's where you throw me off. I, I don't need yeah. you like you can't be real and then not be real. You can't have your show be like a. it was like when Eric Bischoff talked about Glacier. He's like, I brought in Glacier too late. I brought in Glacier after the NWO debut. So once the NWO debuted, it made it real, overtake it. And then I brought in a Mortal Kombat character. You can't just like mix the two. And I feel like you can't show behind the scenes footage of this and that and a family man. And we're going to arrest you and this. You can't do that. And then have Tony D just kidnapping fools and throwing them over bridges. It just takes me out of it. Let's just make him a mobster in the wrestling world. World, not a true mobster you know what i mean he's like yeah that, he's not a hitman like i don't know yeah i don't know Shawn michaels though that's what he does right every nxc is developmental so they all can't be hits you gotta you have gotta some bad stuff. weeks to get yeah. yeah to get to where you need to get to but this was just one of those misses it is what it is yeah Re- it, well it won't win the top of the week i'll tell you that much but we'll move on to spoiler alert hopefully the <laughs> next week yeah <clears throat> all yeah. right yeah yeah, that's it. I think I mean, that's about yeah. Yeah, yeah I think that was sometimes not really much to talk about. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes NXT throws shit against the wall and sees what sticks. And this week was one of those weeks, and not a lot stuck in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Most of it fell off. But anyway, and speaking of that, let's get into our segment because that's about that kind of talk. That's what we're talking about here. What sticks? What doesn't sticks? It's highs and lows. I forget if we have an intro for this. We do. I think we do right? Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. So as we're getting into it, remember. Keep tuning in. Keep subscribing. We're blowing up on YouTube. We keep moving up. Keep yeah. moving us up on YouTube, y'all. And keep subscribing on Apple Music and so on. Keep doing everything. It. Yes, we appreciate let's it. Let's go. We do. Highs and lows, let's go. This is highs and lows. It's time for the list. Who's killing it and who should probably go and sit? You're the best getting listed up. Highs hell. Just for the lows, they can come up here and take a L. Yes, they got their fingers on the button, yeah. Never sweat the mid, just the best and who run it. Uh, I'ma let them chill, let them run through the list of names. This is highs and lows. Go ahead and do your thing. All right. So we're going to give some highs and lows from this week in WWE. What we, uh, maybe a couple each. Let's see. So as yeah. always, we start with the producer himself. Mr. Ryan enjoys wrestling. What you got for me with the high? Oh, okay. Like so I'll. High. I'll go. I'll go with uh, with Trick Williams is my high right now. Trick Williams Ooh. winning, being the NXT champion, um, the epitome of you know where he was a couple of years ago. He was a security guard in a segment with Braun Breaker, I think, or somebody along those lines. Mm-hmm. And now he here he is three years later, the face of NXT. And I mean, the dude, he's been. This is his time. This is his time to really carry the brand. This is his time Ooh. to really carry the show i like no i like you know i know that not every opponent can be like a wrestlemania-esque dream match or something so mm-hmm. you know noam dar i think they're they're building him up to be a star you know we, we we're just talking about tony d'angelo i, I kind of like what he's doing with lash legend I, like you said i'm i'm a little intrigued with what they're doing where they're going with it but i feel like trick williams you know he's only been champion for about two weeks but mm-hmm. it's been a productive two weeks i'm 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 Happy to see him as the champion. I hope that he has a long, successful championship reign. I hope they don't look at things like ratings or draw, being like, oh, he's not a draw. We yeah. got the belt off of him. I think they got to just let him cook and let him do his thing as as the face of NXT, especially with Braun Breaker not there anymore, Carmelo Hayes not there anymore, uh, you know, the Dragonoff not there anymore. This is really Trick Williams' time to shine. 
and I'm I'm all for it, man. I mean, you talk about building a star. That's what these. That's what WWE has done over the last three years. And this is, you know, when when the time comes for Trick to come up to the main roster, I think he's going to do huge things. And I think Trick Carmelo Hayes could main event WrestleMania one day. Um, but right now, Trick is the face of NXT, and I think yeah. uh, I think he deserves his flowers. I agree. And, and if we're going to compare new champions, he's doing a lot better than Cody, and he's doing a lot better 100%. than Strickland. Yeah. So I agree with you. It's a good high. All right. I'm going to go, surprisingly, even though I didn't like the buildup of what they did, but I want to talk about the North American Women's Championship and the fact okay. that out of AEW and WWE, NXT is the first organization to get a secondary women's championship. Well, AEW like, has the TBS championship. And uh, the okay, championship. I, I yeah. guess they do have the TBS. So they do have, uh, okay, quote me there. Yeah. Yes, yes, you're right, you're right, you're right. But other Here's than right. that. Yeah. But in WWE, why is it NXT? Yeah. No, good for AEW. AEW's women's division is the best right now in wrestling. We stated mm -hmm. that a couple weeks ago. So you got me there, TBS. But yes, but out of it, we're going to get this North American championship. And I like it. I think it's good. Um, I actually think NXT women's division is the second best behind AEW, I think TNA's third. I think they faltered a little bit. And then WWE is last. And I know NXT, WWE the same, but no, they're not. NXT's women's division is stacked. It's good. I think it's deserving. I hope Sol Ruka wins it. It looks like she's going to being the number one. I think she's the perfect person to carry that title. Um, but yeah, and you're right. The TBS title is fun. And Willow Nightingale's killing it right now as a TBS champion. And so is Julia Hart. They're usually better than the women's championship. And that's what I'm hoping with this North American Championship Women's Division. And I am excited. Now that we got the 12, I'm excited to see the tournament fold. So I don't like the build this week. I just like the fact that they're appreciating the women. They deserve it. So, Yeah, no, I, I love it. I love the, you know, it's tournament time in WWE. You're going to have Queen mm -hmm. of the Ring. You're going to have King of the Ring. But you're also going to have the 12 women tournament for the mid-card championship. And I think yeah. that's the right way to do it. Yeah, like you said, I didn't care for the buildup with the combine and all that. It was just ranking them stupid. Mm -hmm. But I think this is going to be a fantastic tournament, and it's really going to showcase the the future of the WWE in the women's division for sure. Word, word. All right. Got a second high? Yeah, my other high also kind of sort of comes from the land of NXT, um, but she's killing it on the main roster, and that's Tiffany Stratton. That girl... Whew. Like not only is it Tiffy time, but man, she is she is making the most of her television opportunities. She is the star right now of mm -hmm. the women's division on SmackDown. Mm -hmm. And that's a women's division on SmackDown that includes the women's champion, Bailey. That's the women's division right now that includes the uh the women, the new women's tag team champions, Bianca Belair and Jade Cargill. It, mm -hmm. Tiffany Stratton is the face of that women's division on SmackDown right now. She is killing it. Her matches are fantastic. She, her character is great. And this is also somebody who <clears throat> is relatively new-ish to wrestling and mm -hmm. new-ish to WWE. And you know, just a few years ago, look at where she was to where she is now. You know, she was putting over Becky Lynch. She is. Uh, she beat Becky Lynch to win the title in NXT, and now she's she's carrying the women's division on SmackDown. So she's. She's she's on fire right now, and WWE is doing something right with Tiffany Stratton. I just I don't want them to like give her the title too soon. Uh, I want them to kind of continue building her and making her, you know, making her better. But mm -hmm. uh, don't do anything. Don't do what they did with LA Knight, where we're gonna put her because she's super over and the crowd loves her. Mm -hmm. We're gonna put her in the title match, and then, you know, then all of a sudden her star falters a little bit and kind of loses her luster. I don't want to see that happen. I I, I really just <clears> want to see her continue putting on banger after banger matches. And I know she just competed for the women's championship, but don't give her a one-on-one -on -one match with Bailey. Like let's, let's have her move on to some secondary feuds and other things, but she's but, kidding. Yeah. I agree with you. And the sad part is they already are. I feel like she's getting yeah. bad timing because she's so over right now, but Bailey just won the bell. And I know yeah, they're can't ruining Bailey right now. I don't know why every time Bailey wins a championship, WWE doesn't know how to book her, but yeah. So they need to kind of just let her beat everybody else and work her way back up. I agree. All right. My last one is your least favorite, and that's the Drew and CM Punk feud. I'm actually loving it. I think this is the perfect way to tell a story without having them touch and wrestle. I appreciate Like I said, I don't know why CM Punk said that line because he knew they couldn't <laughs> wrestle and touch. So why even say and that And he knew line? he wasn't there. Yeah, I, I know. It's so dumb. But take away that line, and everything has been perfect. The buildup, the animosity, the shots. 
how aggressive they are. Drew is perfect. CM Punk, I feel like has been... I'm loving it, and I'm so excited for whenever they wrestle, which I'm assuming SummerSlam, I think it's going to be bonkers, and I think it'll be more important than any other championship match on the card. I think they're going to they're going to be the attraction everybody wants to see. But like I said, I'm more curious on who wins because neither of them can take an L right now. But I'm all for it. Drew and CM Punk, man, that's my high. I'm digging them. Yeah, and, you know, I don't hate the feud. I just don't really like what CM Punk is bringing to this feud right now. Mm -hmm. um, that's my, my own, you know, I think both guys are, you know, CM Punk's a professional. He knows what he's doing. He's telling a great story. Drew McIntyre yeah. is doing the best work of his career. I think. People have told me on TikTok that they're feeding off of each other, and that's what's making this great. Mm -hmm. And I, I think they are. I think that's good stuff. I just want to see more. I want to see less of the "Hey, Adam Pierce, you know, hey, I'm I'm really happy to be here, and this is the home of the Hartford Whalers, which they're now the Carolina well, Hurricanes right now. Yeah, and yeah. We're down. I know we're down 2-0 to the New York Rangers, but hey, we're gonna turn it around. <laughs> the series is coming here. We're gonna. Right. We're the Hurricane. The Whalers are the Hurricanes now. So get over yeah. it, Hartford. Suck it, All Hartford. Right. But Ooh. um. <laughs> but no, but like just like the hockey references and you know the, the line about Drew Mac like making oh let's tweet at him Drew McIntyre we'll make him turn around we'll make him turn around like I mm -hmm. don't know that that just it, it was just kind of lost on me but um it the feud is great and, and I, I am excited for when these guys wrestle and maybe my mind will change next week. I just want to see more oomph with CM Punk. Yeah, I agree. All right, you have any lows? Or did you yeah, love everything? All right. No, yeah. I got a couple of lows. I got a couple of lows. Um my first low, you know, I'm going to say it, the the low, the, the build to this Intercontinental Championship match at King of the Ring. I don't like that it's a triple threat. I don't mm -hmm. like that they spent all this time of Sami Zayn and Chad Gable working together right before WrestleMania and Chad Gable helping Sami Zayn, you know, working with him on giving him tips on how he can beat Gunther and helping Sami Zayn get his swag back after a series of losses. And, and then... You know, Sami Zayn does the unthinkable, and he beats Gunther at WrestleMania. And then, two weeks into, they they have an Intercontinental Championship match at Montreal, and that's when Chad Gable turns on Sami Zayn and does an ankle lock and on Sami Zayn in front of his wife on the turnbuckle. You know, mm -hmm. suplexing him like great stuff. It was a great heel turn. To now we have Bronson Reed involved. And I know they got to have somebody take a pin. You got to have somebody take a loss and you can continue mm -hmm. building Chad Gable and Sami Zayn for maybe SummerSlam later this year and make that a one-on-one -on -one match. But again, I don't know. I just don't like the, the addition of Bronson Reed to this. This story was already perfect. That would be like WWE deciding at the last second, Hey, let's, let's really, let's, let's add Finn Balor to the CM Punk and Drew McIntyre feud. Let's just throw Finn Balor in there. Let's have them. Let's let's or, or let's throw Damian Priest in there. You know because yeah, you know, Priest took the belt. And, and, no, we want to see Punk and McIntyre. That's what we want to mm -hmm. see. We want to see, and, and on this side, we want to see Sami Zayn and Chad Gable. I don't want to see Bronson Reed. I like Bronson Reed. I don't hate Bronson Reed, but I don't know. He just does. He he doesn't really do it for me. Number one, but him mm -hmm. him being added into this match it just feels completely <clears throat> random. Yeah, I agree. And I, I think the Chad Gable and Sammy is too soon. I think Bronson Reed it needs to get out of the picture. I don't know what Triple H sees in him. And I've always said that. Yeah. I think he's mediocre at best. And I, I think it's fully. I think it's too soon too. Like like already, like you can't build this out. Drew McIntyre and CM Punk are telling a story of not touching mm -hmm. each other. That's been been mm -hmm. told for months. And here we are, not e first PLE after backlash and we're having Sami Zayn wrestle Chad Gable and Bronson Reed. It just, it doesn't mm -hmm. make any sense. Yes, sir. All right. My first low, I already talked about it. I'll say it again. Becky Lynch as champ, same old shit. She's boring. I don't understand why every time she's a champ, she needs to out here call out all these young challengers. And I feel like because the media pretends like she's some kind of like villain, which she's not, and that she doesn't put people over, which isn't true that like, that's her new gimmick is like, Oh, everybody, I'm going to, all these young like becky stop that's not like i don't know i just feel like this isn't the man you talk about cm punk being too cheesy i feel like that's what becky lynch's new man is it's just like yeah. she's the man hi kiss babies and hello i'm just over it not and she it. was also another edgy you know anti-authority type character. that's what i mean yeah yeah, yeah. just like cm nah, punk over it yeah agree. yeah i agree i agree all right what time all right we got like a minute or so come on all what right. you got my last low <clears throat> is 
we talked about this a minute ago, but I'm going to bring it up again. WWE moving two of the King and Queen of the Ring matches to live events. Come on now, like all because you couldn't you couldn't pace your show correctly. You mm -hmm. you had to get you had to have CM Punk do an impromptu match. You had to have or an impromptu promo. Promo, yeah. Uh, you know, you, you some of your like Gunther and Sheamus, as great as that match was, it couldn't be shorter to to make mm -hmm. room. For, you know, especially when you teased, you know, Kofi Kingston and Rey Mysterio and Zelina yeah. Vega and Shayna Baszler. You know, you you tease them and you promise that this match would happen on Raw. And now they're moving to random live events, and we're gonna have to look up the results online. That's mm -hmm. a that's a loss. And, and I already know who's not winning King of the Ring. Uh, Kofi Kingston and Rey Mysterio are not winning because yeah. you think they would do that to Gunther? You think they're gonna do that to Jey Uso? You think they would do that to yeah. whoever? Uh, you know, Lo uh, Ilya Dragunov? No, mm -hmm. they're doing that to the people who aren't gonna win, and it's a damn shame. It'd be like the NBA playoffs being like, hey, this week's game between the Celtics and the uh, – who are they playing right now? I forget. The They're Cavs. The, yeah. the Cavs. We're going to go ahead and have them on our NBA.com website. So if you oh, want to yeah. check it out because they're not important <laughs> enough to be on TNT or ESPN. So check them out there. Yeah, it's yeah. stupid. I don't know what the hell they're thinking. All right, my last one we talked about too, Judgment Day. I have no idea <laughs> – what are we we've been doing this now for two years i feel like why did he just ruffle up his feathers and then they went straight into hey guys i'm sorry especially about after the match let's all hug perfect finn balor lost uh-oh here it comes it's okay finn you did your best let's high five jd mcdonough everyone did their best we all love each other da -da 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 -da. the end like what in the fudge is happening with judgment day what are we break them up or don't are we yeah. done breaking them up then? Because if that's what we're doing, I'm I'm for it. But if not, move on. I I, I can't do this anymore. I'm so sick of it. That so and it. can we please have them win a damn match? Like I'm Finn no, Balor losing no, in King nobody. of the Ring. Like I get you want to put Jey Uso mm -hmm. over, but you didn't have to have them wrestle each other in the first round. You could no. have freaking uh, you know you could have had Finn Balor wrestle somebody else. You could put Finn mm -hmm. Balor's match on the live event. I don't or have mm -hmm. him wrestle Rey Mysterio. Hey, that's Dom's dad. Boom, there's a story right there. And have him beat mm -hmm. Dom's dad. But no, you have to have Judgment Day lose. So that's ridiculous. Oh, and we have JD versus uh, uh, Homeboy coming up soon. Uh, the re uh, Braun Strowman. That's what they yeah. announced because he was like, what would you say about Strowman? So now we're going to have Braun Strowman against Jay McDonough. Cool. cool. And I guess we're Braun right Strowman's on. not going to be part of the Wyatt family or whatever. Like, I don't i don't yeah. know what's yeah. happening i, don't I have know. no and idea stop with the qr i don't want to see that i really don't <laughs> i either do i but it's happening so it is what it is yeah. all right that's our week in wwe it was a good week fun week it had its ups and downs like always but i enjoyed it and that included backlash and smackdown which we already covered uh tomorrow we got aew we'll talk about all things dynamite that's it because they had mm -hmm. we already did rampage and they had no collision because you know they're not important <laughs> enough but we're going to talk all things aew dynamite and have a fun little segment for you as always, I'm the Heartbreak Dude, Denton. You can catch me if you just want to hear me at HBD Denton on all social media devices. Keep tuning in. Keep subscribing. I'm loving the love that we're getting, all the support, all the views. I love seeing it on YouTube. Melts my heart knowing that all this work and effort we put in is somewhat Finally being appreciated. Yeah. True that. And with me, as always, is the man of the hour. It's Ryan enjoys wrestling. If you want to hear me, just... You know, piss people off with CM Punk takes. Go at uh, at Ryan enjoys wrestling on TikTok. Um, I'm working on getting my YouTube up. I need to do a better job of updating my Instagram. Especially, we don't know what's happening with TikTok here in the future, so I need to get my socials in order. Um, but go follow us at TikTok on Two Dudes with Attitudes. We're on X at Two Dudes PC. We might be having a special guest coming on in here in a few weeks, which we'll talk more about that later on in the you know in a, in a as we get closer to that. Um, and yeah it's uh you know if you're listening to us on apple and spotify we appreciate all the love and support leave us a five star rating and review and yeah mm -hmm. this is you know we're blowing up man and 2024 is going to be the year of the dudes we're just going to get bigger and better as we keep going two dudes, two with dudes attitudes, we're back let's go we're out two dudes with attitudes let's go it's the two dudes and the attitudes ruthless aggressively speaking so let's do this we're riding